order the our meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, November 30th, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the, the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. Joe Curl? Here. Steve Corsi? Yes. And Len Diggins? Yes. Here. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Here. Doug Heim? Here. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remote, remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that some folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen name or device name if you'd like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All the meeting materials for this meeting except any executive session materials are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard. We re recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We now turn into the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on, on the agenda after they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care not to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items. For public comment items, after members have spoken, I as a chair will afford the public comment opportunities as follows. I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and for three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call vote. All right, and that takes us to our agenda. First meeting on, item on our agenda is our consent agenda, which just contains minutes of meetings, November 4th, 2020, November 9th, 2020, and November 16th, 2020. Do, uh, Mrs. Mahan? Uh, I'd like to move approval um, subject to the uh, email corrections we received from Ms. Mark today from the select board office. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Second. All right. Mr. Diggins, any comments or questions? Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Mr. Corsi? No comments. Attorney Heim? Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. And that takes us 
to our next item on the agenda, item number three, that is a public hearing posted for 7 p.m. On, for a vote on the MWRA debt ship and a discussion vote property tax classification tax rate. Do we have Mr. Tierney and Mr. Feely? Mr. Tierney, I don't see Mr. Feely, but maybe Paul can tell me if I think I saw Attorney Wynn Stanley O'Connor. Maybe she's standing. We, we can pro promote Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. They're, bo they're both promoted now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And if you see Dana Mann out there, you can let him in too. Please. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yep. All right. Mr. Tierney, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, Kevin Feely's not in there yet. Anyone see him? No? No. No, I do not. I will start then. Uh, thank you all. Good to see everybody. Uh, before we get to business, uh, I'd just like to thank the board, Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, Kevin, Chairman Kevin Feely, and Bob Greeley, who is not with us tonight, uh, for working close with me throughout the year and their support. And I'd also like to acknowledge my um, staff of Dana Mann, who is with us tonight, and also Jenny O'Rourke, and Mary McMakin for all the help they give me throughout the year. Uh, so without further ado, um, everyone have their classification packet in front of them. Uh, first page, just the date and time, date of the hearing. Uh, if you go to the second page, we have uh, the FY 20, 2020 limit, uh, levy limit. So we add two and a half percent. We had new growth of 850,163. Gives us an FY 21, Levy limit of 126,776,920. To that, we add the school debt exclusion, uh, the water and sewer debt. So the maximum total to be raised is 138,212,969. We are raising uh, 138,199,499. We're going to divide that by the total taxable assessed value. That'll give us our proposed tax rate of 1134 for a thousand dollars of value. A second, uh, turn the page. Uh, this just gives us our minimum residential factor computation. We'll use that to determine our split rate if we so choose. <clears throat> uh, as you can see in the third, fourth and fifth column, um, columns, we have the breakdown of what the rates will be. We go to the next page. This breaks down um, the percent. If we adopt 1% um, and just leave a flat rate, the rate would be posed to be 1134. Mm -hmm. If we choose to go to a 5% split rate, um, the tax rate will decrease on the residential to 1131, increase on the commercial, industrial, and personal property to 1191, uh, which in turn will increase the commercial, industrial, personal property taxes by 280. $83 and decrease the residential by $16.25. And if you go down the columns all the way uh, down to the maximum allowable of 150%, you can see uh, the impact of shifting that rate. Um, it takes quite a bit um, burden on the commercial, industrial, personal property. Now the next page, we have the residential exemption. Um, if we adopt a 20% residential exemption, that will increase the tax rate for everybody to $14.10. Uh, if we do a 15% um, exemption, $13.37. If we do 10%, $12.71. And if we do a 5%, it'll increase the tax rate to $12.11. Uh, not many communities in, in um, Massachusetts use this. It's usually uh, just for cities and towns that have a lot of 
um, apartment buildings and summer homes that are a very high value. Um, the break-even point would be $801,315. Uh, that's the point where if we shifted it, it would not, you would not see any impact to your tax bill. So to the next page, it's just a history of tax rates in town. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Next page is uh, the LA-4, which gives us all of our parcel counts and their corresponding value for each um, class of property. I want to take a second to look at all of them. Uh, the next page is just our, it's called the LA-13, which is tracks our, um, our growth. Uh, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, $850,163 for growth. Uh, the first two columns are all our prior year abatements and their corresponding values. Next page is our comparison between FY21 and FY20. Um, top line is the single families, um, average value, 21 for FY21 is 829,340. Uh, last year was 825,145. And as you can see, it goes, gives you all the percentage of increase and decrease in the middle column for all classes of property. Next page is just a pie chart breaking down where all of um, where the taxes are going. I will fix their pie chart. It's a little off. And I actually have fixed it on my end and I will fix it before I put it on the town's website. Next page is the tax rate components. It just breaks down the tax rate um, into the individual parts, the levy base, two and a half percent growth, water and sewer, and the school debt. Um, yeah, down the bottom, uh, the average, like I said, the average uh, single family home and the average taxes on a single family home this year will be 9,405, up from 9,126 last year. And the final page is for uh, three four surrounding communities. Um, Belmont and Winchester have not responded to me yet, uh, but Lexington has, and their average single family home taxes are 16,097 uh, projected for FY21. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Tierney. Welcome. Mary or Dana, did you have anything to add before I turn to the board? I would just, if I could say that we provide the board, of, uh, the select board with the information for the select board to make the determination as to whether you want to split tax rate or classification. Yep. And, and I will say that the, the strength in this town continues to be the residential tax base is continuing, is strong. Um, things are selling over asking price even during the pandemic in town. No, I have nothing to add to that. All right, thank you. All right, and Mr. Carroll. No, uh, th thank you very much. I, um, I appreciate this presentation. I, I know that for all the years I've been on the board, we've never entertained um, a uh, split uh, classification and uh, that this is definitely not the year to do it. Um, uh, we have only 5.4% of, um, <clears throat> of our, com uh, of our uh, tax base is commercial, if I'm reading this correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we know how, how badly um, our businesses are struggling. I'd also, I'd, I'd, uh, only also point out that I'm so happy to see this uh, this sheet now. We see the impact of the uh, decisions that the board made to start um, rolling back the um, water sewer shift, and we we see that uh, um, reflected here. And I'm happy to see that that number going down. Um, you know, at the same time that understanding that has an impact, and at the same time that we just uh, passed through town meeting, um, uh, home rule petition to to provide water and sewer. Um, relief program for our for our seniors. So um, thank you very much for this this work. Uh, I, I think the only other question that I would have is um, it, on the, the, sh the sheet that, um, you know, shows a workup of the classification. I, I see that the, the sample impacts are based on um, 
uh, an increment or decrement per 500,000. But but the uh, the last two pages, um, I assume that's based on a true average um, uh, uh, tax bill for um, single family homes and other classes of property in town. For, for the average single, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. The average single family where you have 9,405. I assume that that's. Yes, that's based oh, on I the see, I see right above it. Yeah, yeah. average a, average uh, assessed value. Correct. 329, 339. Great, thank you very much. Um, would a motion be in order, Mr. Chair? Please. Um, if I could ask council, is a specific form that this motion needs to take? I know we usually have something in front of us, I think. But... Would it be to set the tax classification rate at $11.34 per thousand uh, of value? Attorney Hines, I don't see him on my screen. That's correct, Ms. Bond. And we have to take two separate votes, I guess, for that and for the water and sewer debt shift? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll make the first motion then to um, to set the uh, tax rate at eleven dollars and thirty four cents with um, uh, no with, with a, a uh, factor factor of one. One. Right. Mrs. Mahan. Second. All right, and Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and and just a, a point of clarification. I know we're voting the the residential factor of one and, and I just want to get back to attorney Heim. I, I'm not sure we actually vote the tax rate. I think we just vote the factor and the assessors determine the tax rate. So I just want to, um, and it, it's fine. It's going to be $11 and 34 cents, but just as a matter of procedure, if, if I could ask that question. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. I, I think in substance, that's correct. It's what you're doing is setting the factor which yields the rate that Ms. Mahan has referenced. As long as it's clear what the board is doing, I think the motion satisfies that. Okay, th th thank you, Attorney Heim. Just a couple of comments, and, and Mr. Caro had mentioned it. Um, this year, included in the total levy, um, we have water and sewer debt of 3,691,454. A year ago, that number was over 5.5 .5 million. So we've had a discussion over the past year about shifting debt from the real estate tax bills onto the water bills. And, and people have contacted us when their water bills came out and, and said our water bills went up so much. Where's the offset on the other side? Here it is. It, it, it is as a percent of the total levy, it's smaller, but this is the beginning of it over, over, over a three year period. Um, the other thing I just wanna comment on and, and I, I wanna thank Mr. Tierney for the presentation is that included in the tax levy this year is $850,000 of new growth. That, that I believe is about $76 million in, in value that's been added um, to the town. And we talk about the need for growth and some you know, people wanna have responsible growth in the community, but this is where you see it and how it comes into play. Um, where you have growth, it spreads the burden out among taxpayers, lessens the burden for existing taxpayers. So um, this year, I think original projections where it was gonna be 650,000 in the five-year plan, it's 850,000. So that's that's actually good news in terms of where that number is coming in. So just a, a couple of comments on that. And I wanna thank you for the presentation. Welcome. Thank you. And Mr. Diggins. We don't have a lot of time in this meeting. It's still a lot to cover, so I'm just going to keep it short. And thank you uh, for the great presentation and all the data. And also um, take this opportunity to thank you for uh, participating in that fiscal resources tax um, task force uh, meeting a couple of months ago, where we talked about in exploring um, new growth. I mean, uh, you really know your stuff, and and you were so patient with explaining a lot of stuff to me, and I appreciate that. And and um, I'll be happy to vote for this. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So, Mr. Chaplain, at this point, since this is a public hearing, we'll open this up for anyone that wishes to speak. From that's our participant, just use the raise hand function on your Zoom application. We'll promote you to panelists. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could, while people are raising hands, if I could just ask, I neglected to ask a question. Yes. Um. Yeah. 
and, and thank you to Mr. Cherney, Mr. Mann. I think it was Ms. O'Rourke and Mr. McMakin. I apologize if I didn't get that right. My question is, um, besides the normal um, recourse for people seeking relief um, before the Board of Assessors in terms of abatements and, and the like, um, in light of COVID-19, relief grants and other remedies, whether through the CARES Act or possible future um, federal monies or maybe even state allocations, um, does the Board of Assessors or the Director know of any current opportunities beyond the usual norm because of COVID-19 or anticipate any other possible avenues of remedies um, to residents or businesses? Uh, not for this year. Um, we don't see any uh, other sort resources um, to give any relief uh, since assessments are retrospective uh, and these assessments came out before actually um, COVID-19 was thrust upon us. So for this year, there is not any uh, additional help inside, um, on the table. Thank you. Unless anyone else has a comment. Mr. Chairman, may I just um, bring yeah. one matter to the attention of the select board? Mr. Tierney came up with a plan uh, last year with respect to abatements um, that had not been voted on when the pandemic hit so that people, rather than coming to hearings, could provide videos of the inside of their homes uh, to the board of assessors so that we could uh, review the abatements that way virtually. So um, we have developed a plan so that people um, do not need to come and meet with the assessors per se, which we intend to continue to do, Paul, right? Yes, yes. Mr. Chaplain, do we have any raised hands? Mr. Chairman, there are no hands raised. All right, with that, we will take a motion by Mr. Carl, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Turn your hand. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. And then, do you, Mr. Tarrant, do you have anything additional to add about the debt shift? Uh, no, I think, um, I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Uh, no, I'm all set. Did are you calling on me? Because I might have had a question. Yeah. Attorney Hyde, do we need a separate motion? We need a separate motion on the uh, the on what? I'm sorry, the last part dropped out. Uh, to set the debt shift at three six nine one four five four. I'll second Mr. Carroll's motion. Sure. Mrs. Of course, any additional comments or questions? Uh, no comment. Mr. Diggins. No comment. All right, and we have a motion by Mr. Carroll, second by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Hyde. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. All right, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Good night. And that brings us to appointments. Item number four on our agenda, Open Space Committee. Emily Nink, term to expire June 30th, 2023. And we have Ms. Nink with us. Ms. Nink, can you hear us? Hello, Ms. Nick, can you hear us? Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, if you could just say your name for the record, just tell us a little bit about why you wanted to serve on the Open Space Committee. Sure, good evening. Thanks for having me. My name's Emily Nink. Um, I recently moved to Arlington over the summer um, and was saw the call for open space committee members and uh, I've been community gardening for quite some time in Everett, Massachusetts. I also worked with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council uh, to 
do a community food assessment in Everett and contributed the city's first food plan. Uh, so I got a little bit of a taste at that point with uh, the open space and recreation planning process because we did the food plan as an addendum to the OSRP in Everett. Uh, so I'm excited now to be uh, potentially participating in the OSRP process here in Arlington and um, contributing however else I can to the needs of the open space committee. Thank you. Sure. I'll turn to the board, Mr. Diggins. Uh, well, I would like to move um, uh, that we approve uh, Ms. Um, Nink um, to the um, position on the open spaces committee and I'd like to say a little more after that. Sure. Okay, I, uh, I, I, I mean, your, your CV, your resume, I mean, I'm so impressed. I mean, uh, I, 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 I love the research that you have done with MAPC. I'm definitely interested in whether um, heirloom tomatoes uh, do taste better or not, whether the taste matters. Uh, but um, you, I think you have so much potential. I mean, uh, and and I, I really look forward to seeing what you do with Open Space Committee and, and getting you more um, tap, tap, expect, excuse me, perhaps more involved in the town. So thank you so much, me, for um, for signing up for this. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. DeCourcy. Yes, I'll second uh, Mr. Diggins' motion, and also thank Ms. Nink for um, volunteering for this position, and and uh, look forward to to, to uh, hearing hearing from you on your experiences here, and then uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Ms. Nink. Um, my colleagues have far better say what I would uh, probably say, but I really value your um, interest in, in, in dedication of volunteerism um, towards health equality and other social and racial issues that I know you're going to bring to the Open Space Committee, um, which is really important, vital. Um, and you have the energy and youth to do it. So God bless you and, and thank you for doing that. You're a very well-rounded um, young woman and I appreciate you working with you in the future. You too. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm always appreciative when long-term, long-time residents um, volunteer for our boards and committees, but I'm always in, particularly impressed when folks like yourself who, who have just moved here uh, volunteer to, to lend your, your uh, expertise and, and your energy to, to our boards and committees and get involved in our town right, right from the get-go. So I, I really appreciate that and thank you and I, I wish you luck on uh, the Open Space Committee. Thanks very much. Yep, and just to reiterate what my colleagues have said, thank you for your willingness to serve. It's always good to see a couple more jumbos in town government. You have two on this board, so. Oh, good. <laughs> So thank you. All right, so we have a motion right. for approval by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. DeCorsi, Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCorsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nick. All right, and... That takes us to item number five on our agenda under traffic rules and order and other business discussion and, and approval MBTA proposed service reductions. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. So as the board may recall, I, I believe it was at the last board meeting under new business, we addressed the uh, what then were the very freshly proposed service reductions by the MBTA. And we discussed coming back at a future meeting with a letter, an advocacy letter, really pleading our case in Arlington for uh, the impact that the proposed cuts would have. So a team of myself, Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler, directing a, Director of Planning and Community Development, Jenny Rate, and our Senior Transportation Planner, Dan Amstutz, uh, met several times, drafted uh, a draft letter you saw last week, uh, and then put together a revised letter that was sent to the board and uh, downloaded or uploaded onto Nova's agenda today. We also consulted today with our state senator and two state representatives about how they saw, um, what they saw as a path for effective advocacy. And what we came out of that meeting with was advice from all of them to state our case plainly and directly uh, and what our concerns were about potential losses of service from, um, in terms of the T. They also expressed a willingness to sign on to a letter with the board 
uh, if the board did endorse a letter tonight, I would suggest that um, I could sign it along with the board chair and the three members of our delegation so that we spoke, so that we speak with a consistent voice from Arlington. What you'll see in the letter is an outlining of our concerns about the cuts that are proposed to the, the headways in the 77, the potential elimination of the 79 and the 350 and the 80, our concern with being labeled as an inner core community, our concern with a disproportionate impact based on our already pre-existing disproportionately high assessment that we receive from the T as compared to other communities. And overall, you'll see throughout the letter, our concern about the impacts these proposed cuts will have on our longstanding goals for shifting people out of their cars into other modes of transit. So uh, happy to make any suggested changes the board might have, uh, but we do feel it's important to advocate for Arlington at the state level as these decisions are being made over the next several months. Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to move to approve sending the letter and to, to authorize the, the chair to sign on behalf of the board and and if uh, and, the, and the town manager. Um, and I also wanna thank the town manager and his team for um, the revisions to the letter. I, I, I think it's important for the, for the town to respond to this and, and to, to point out some some issues both on the on the routes and on assessment issues and and other areas of concern. So I, I, I think it's an appropriate step. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Yes, I'll I'll second the motion. Um, I appreciate the work that's gone into this and um, the revisions. I do think that this is um, clear on my read as to how um, how this impacts us. I appreciate the layering in of uh, some of the demographic information about um, development trends, um, as well as the, the other activity that, that the town's engaged in um, around uh, transportation. So um, I'm happy to support this. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Thank you. So until I saw um, the, our um, state reps and state senator um, signing on to this in, in such a formal way. I was going to suggest me that we make some significant edits mean, and probably do so uh, with myself mean, and uh, the, the parties that um, the town manager had mentioned and along with another member of the select board and uh, getting your permission to submit that. And then uh, because the deadline is the fourth and then um, bring it to your review uh, at our next meeting um, my concern is that I understand we, that we need to advocate for Arlington, but we, as I've said many times, we, in any other big, any other, most other cities in this country, I mean, um, Boston, Arlington would be a neighborhood I mean, of, of, of Boston. I mean, and I mean, what we've learned from the pandemic, I mean, is that we really need to work together um, as communities in order to uh, solve uh, the, the big problems that we face. And, and transportation and public transit I mean, is a really big one. I mean, and, and yes, I mean, Arlington is going to be affected by the cuts. Uh, Arlington has citizens, residents that need public transportation, uh, but every argument that we make about how it will be, how it would detrimentally affect Arlington is an argument that's, that's going to be made by other municipalities. And, and, and so uh, I understand the percentages being here that are affected, uh, but this is really one of those cases where uh, it's the numbers that matter, not so much the percentages, because uh, there are other communities uh, that have a larger population. And so a smaller percentage of people using public transportation, but the number of people who are affected by it uh, are higher. Uh, and we have communities in this region that uh, have a lot more um, minorities it, um, that are going to be seriously affected uh, by, by, by what's affecting the T right now. The, the, the T is operating the, with a deficit and it's a growing deficit because of the operating uh, loss of operating, loss of, of affairs. Uh, and also another thing that's affecting the T is that it, because of social distancing, it needs to run more 
buses, be it so that people can ride the buses more safely, be it. And so, uh, and so we have to shift service in order to take care of places where the demand is increased for so for example the 111 has more people that are using it now because he coming from from um, charlestown i mean you, you can't walk over the tobin bridge he, and and so he you only have so many resources that you can pull from and some communities are going to be affected by be the need to pull service in order to take care of those communities and so Thinking about the region, we and thinking about how we we in Arlington, we we don't simply we say that we Black Lives Matter and Brown Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. We really try to live up to that, and and part of that I think really involves us sometimes accepting that yes, we advocate me for our residents, me, but we are part of a larger community, and sometimes we have to be appreciate that some of the resources are gonna come from us to help the community. So I kind of wanted to see something along those lines uh, in the letter. Uh, I can appreciate that it would probably be uh, very difficult to edit it. I'm gonna vote for it, I mean, but I just wanted to say this piece here to just say that, um, uh, let's just think about the fact that we, in order for Arlington to really do well, I mean, the region has to do well. I mean, I mean, Arlington can't advocate for itself to the detriment of the neighboring communities. I mean, and so I mean, one thing I suggest that we think about should cuts happen I mean, is that we try to get I mean, the bus rapid transit to go all the way to Harvard Square. I mean, Cambridge has been reluctant to do that, but I think now is the time to push for doing that. I mean, if indeed the cuts do happen, let's try and find I mean, the residents who are stranded and try to come up with a program in Arlington to help them out I mean, and, and try to lead by example of what we do when we face adversity. And that is that we work with other communities and we work I mean, within our community to try to, um, to make things better. So that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, definitely appreciate um, our colleagues in the House and the Senate signing on to a letter. And don't mean this sarcastically or undue criticism, but to me, that's really not doing much signing on to a letter. Um, what I'd like to um, put forth uh, to the town manager and perhaps Mr. Diggins is that. Um, Somewhere in the letter, I believe, I can't remember, I know one and two is brain free in Arlington. I can't remember who's one and who's two. Um, but in terms of the amount of the assessment that we pay with the MBTA, uh, as compared to our town and, and residents therein, it's, it's vastly um, at a disadvantage. Um, and that somehow has to be co corrected or remedied since I've been on the board, I've heard the same mantra over and over again, how Arlington is unfairly, you know, fourfold assessed by the MBTA and that needs to be done. Um, and I'm, I, I will vote for this letter. I'd like to see some language in there. Um, I'd like to see two things, some language in there that says, you know, what our assessment is, how um, it's three or fourfold what it should be. Um, and if that the MBTA, uh, chooses to go ahead with these really, some would say draconian cuts to commuter, ser commuter service here in Arlington that we present a factor of how much we're overpaying, how much the cut is and what the difference is there. And that we will seek through our uh, delegation in the state house to um, modify Arlington's contribution to the MBTA um, to that amount. Now, I know some people could say, well, you can't do that. It won't get passed. I don't care. I'd like to take some sort of action versus everybody just signing on to a letter. And my, so my request is, can we make this letter more stronger and it, sort of saying, if you do make these amount of cuts that will affect this amount of ridership in Arlington and we're paying three, fourfold um, that our assessment should be this new number 
and that the uh, town and the board are going to work with our representative and senator, um, as well as other representatives and senators to uh, modify our contribution to the MBTA. And then my second request would be, um, since Arlington pays so much, in my opinion, and perhaps other people's opinion, over double, triple pays so much that we ask our uh, senator and two representatives to, uh, I understand we have the remedy of uh, committing, you know, submitting public comments and then having the uh, conversation with the fiscal control board in December, but that's a sort of free for all that because Arlington does pay so much, in my opinion, gets really very little that our Senator and Rex um, hold a meeting um, with the general, general manager and the town manager and anyone else he deems fit um, with Steve um, Pocktack to talk about how we can either not suffer these cuts or we can um, get a truer uh, MBTA assessment for what Arlington should be paying versus what Arlington is four times paying. And I don't, I'm not directing this to Mr. Chapdelaine at all because I know we, along with my colleagues, present and former have discussed this, but we're always just sending letters. We're always saying how we pay ridiculous amounts, but I think we need to, I know in the past they say, oh yeah, I'll never get through the state house. I don't care. I wanna stop the conversation in some way. Um, and I'd be sorry to do the, this to you, Mr. Chapdelaine. <laughs> Take any comments, uh, pro or con, um, on the two suggestions I have making the letter much stronger, indicating if you make these cuts, we're lowering our assessment, whether we can do that or not, or, and or the um, senator and representatives getting a meeting with you and whoever else with Mr. Uh, Pofta. Mr. Corsi, do you wanna come back around on that? Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so and Mrs. Mahan's absolutely right about the the issues on assessments over the years. When from my days on finance committee, this came up year to year as well in terms of Arlington's relative burden compared to other communities. Um, I see that there is reference to the assessments in here. I mean, I, I think um, you, perhaps the manager can take a look at that section again on, on the assessments, but I, th I think that might have to be a separate discussion in terms of you know, how, how things are calculated, but I certainly agree with the sentiment that uh, Mrs. Mahan expressed there in terms of the, you know, what some people would say the relative unfairness to Arlington in terms of what, what's being paid. Um, I, I just think for, due to time constraints, I'm not sure they'll, that there may be an ability to, to change the letter much, but certainly um, doesn't mean that we shouldn't look into and, and, and advocate for change in that assessment formula. Mr. Carroll? Yeah, I, th I think this, Ms. Mr. Corsi um, summarized it um, well, but I think we should, we should try to figure out as a board how we can um, make a stronger statement on, on the assessments. And could I ask, Mr. if I could through you, Mr. Chair, ask Mr. Chaplain if um, he has any comments? Yeah. I I'd, I'd be happy, Mr. Chair, if that's okay with you. Yep. So, um, yeah, the point is really uh, well taken. Ms. Mahan, I, if the board was okay with it, what I could do, I, I know we sent a letter to our legislative delegation uh, and others maybe three to four years ago that specifically called out uh, the contrast between Arlington's assessment and service and Quincy's assessment and service. Uh, that, that's the community that they're really, it, it really starkly paints the picture. I, I could take that, you know, nearly that exact language that we sent in several years ago and add a line uh, suggesting that um, our concern remains about this issue. And uh, if unresolved, we will seek potential avenues for legislative relief or something to that effect if the board is amenable to that. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, who did you call on? You. Oh, um, that's fine. If, if, if it, it can appear um, on the first page, 
maybe not the first paragraph, second or third, but also um, if through the chair and um, actually at the direction of the chair and through the chair and, and the town manager, that if we can start coming up with, um, and I apologize, I thought it was Braintree, but it's Quincy, sort of come up with a formula of, you know, how much we are overpaying um, and maybe start speaking with the voice uh, from the board and the town and through our delegation that, um, and I hate to say it like this, whether people say it's legal or not, or we can't do it or not, that we need to say, you know what, this is what our fair assessment is, and this is what we're going to stop paying unless you start treating us fairly and look at the assessment. Um, so uh, I, I take what uh, my colleagues, uh, the chair, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Corsi, and Mr. Kiro said, if you can include that, Mr. Chaplain, early on in the letter uh, in terms of that language, but we did state that four years ago. And then as all of us have discussed, as well as you, uh, perhaps discussing this at a future board meeting, um, perhaps with our legislative delegation that, you know, whether it's a road that people say, nothing's gonna happen, you can't get it done. They said that about minimum eight years ago. I think we need to take that next step and really push this issue. So I'm happy to vote for this letter with the, um, uh, addendums that have been discussed tonight. And I thank you, Mr. Chair. I know I've taken way too much time. And thank you to my colleagues. Okay. <clears throat> Anything to add to that? Well, I mean, I don't know the rationale for the, the difference in the assessment. So it's hard for me to go along um, with that notion. I mean, and, and I am not wanting to be combative um, um, with the MBTA at this point in time, uh, given that you know, these cuts are, or coming because we, because we we're, we're in a pandemic, we and the feds we aren't giving us money, and even um, if um, service begins to come back, it's going to come back in a different way. That's going to cause a shift in the way that we distribute service, just because we need more buses in order to do the social distancing, and you can't just get buses like that. So there's going to be uh, some effects on the way that things. Uh, work. I mean, so I would say we can address the assessments I mean, at some other point in time, but I'm not really supportive of putting that in the letter now. Okay. <laughs> you have to move this along. So let's vote on, you know, we've had, a, I think, three members say they're supportive of put, putting that minor adjustment. So um, the original motion was Mr. DeCourcy. So, Mr. Corsi, do you, would you like your motion to be with the language as suggested by Mr. Chaplain? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. I mean, there already is a paragraph in there about the assessment. So, yep. um, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm okay with him adding that. Okay. All right. Attorney Heim, do we have a motion to approve the letter with the addition of the language suggested by Mr. Chaplain? If you can give us a roll call vote. This is Mahat. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. I think it's important for us to be unified, yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurt. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. All right. Agenda. All right, that takes us to item number six on our agenda, discussion and vote minimum high school athletic complex project borrowing notification, Mr. Chaplin. Mr. Mr. Bird. Oh, I just got an echo there, sorry. Um, so this is before the board tonight. Uh, let, let me set a little context. The board may recall that when we entered into the revised regional agreement for man, rather than towns via their town meeting needing to proactively approve borrowings, the section in regards to borrowing was changed in the regional agreement to allow towns within 60 days of the Minuteman School Committee voting to borrow, to have the town call a special town meeting to oppose that borrowing, which would then trigger the ability for the district to go to the district-wide ballot question like occurred during the building project several years ago. So that, that's sort of the context of why this is before the board tonight. The why is, the pro as we know, the project, the building is done. 
but finalizing the athletic fields is not yet complete. With remaining funds from the project and other funding sources as are outlined in the presentation that was provided to the board, they were not, uh, Minuteman is not fully able to go forward with the project. So they're seeking to borrow uh, an additional sum of money. They're also, however, proposing to be able to offset future debt service associated with that uh, borrowing with revenue from renting out the facility. Uh, if that didn't work out, the maximum amount that we would be impacted on a year over year basis would be $77,000 in debt service. We may have to, we may be impacted by that in the first year, just given the timing uh, of the debt payments. Um, so th that's been, that's what has been presented. The finance committee vetted this uh, led by uh, Chair Foskett, uh, Annie LaCourt, and Dean Carmen. Uh, I believe attached to the agenda item tonight uh, was their memorandum supporting this uh, and recommending that we not stand in the way of this expenditure, but obviously wanted to bring this before the board tonight for their consideration uh, to be sure uh, the board didn't feel the need to call a special town meeting to uh, oppose this borrowing. And I'll, I'll, I'll note that our, our Minuteman School Committee representative has read it. Okay, he's promoted. Okay. Mr. Rudman. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman Hurd. I lost the uh, connection there for a moment. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine has has briefed you well and truly on 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 the legal aspects. Um, the Minuteman uh, School Committee has looked at the money we have left over from the building project. We have uh, you know in excess of about five million dollars. We are going to devote that now to athletic fields, both because it increases the usefulness of the physical plant and it provides equity for our students as well as uh, future possibilities for hosting uh, you know, community-wide events. Um, we have enough money to build a bare athletic complex, but it wouldn't have lights. And to, and to build a playing field without lights these days is sort of like buying a car without a radio and an air conditioner. You will save money, you will soon regret it. Uh, the lights, to, to, to be, to be um, uh, you know, direct about it, the lights give us the opportunity to rent these fields on, on, a, on a consistent basis uh, to a number of community parties that have already expressed the interest. Our consultants have estimated between three and $400,000 of unmet need uh, could be could be filled by the Minuteman complex when it fully comes online. No one would be reckless enough to promise you numbers tonight on how much revenue stream we would be able to to devote to finishing the fields project, but we are confident that we will have money to offset uh, this borrowing. And that's why the finance committee of Minuteman has recommended it and the school committee has voted it. And you have the opportunity to say no, as Mr. Chapdelaine has described, or if you choose to let it go forward, you need do nothing. And we will wait for the uh, remainder of the towns in the district to, to um, uh, voice their disapproval if anyone has any. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Mr. Carl, any questions or comments, motions? Uh, I'll, I'll move to uh, in, endorse the requested uh, borrowing. Thank you. For a minute, man. Mrs. Mahan? Second, thank you. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, um, th thank you, Mr. Rubin, for the, for the additional information there. And, and um, I, I will support this, this um, you know, for this phase in particular, it was always understood that minute man may be Maybe coming back for additional funds for the playing field. So I appreciate the the report and the the work done to date by the finance committee. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yes, I support it too. I mean, I just have a quick question about Heimlich. You know, I mean, they are so far below uh, even the next highest bid. Any, um, I'm always suspicious about that. Any idea how they were able to come in so low? I didn't get a chance to query them myself, uh, Mr. Diggins. Um, I'm thinking, though, that because they are a very local company, they can utilize their own existing facilities for um, 
uh, material storage, equipment laydown, all the uh, ancillary needs that they would have that another company might have to contract with, with uh, a private party uh, just to get working space or um, storage space, drop off space uh, somewhere near the near the job site. Uh, I don't, I can't say for sure, but they did impress everyone on the Minuteman school committee with a very, very competitive bid. And, and okay, all right. Just like I said, I'm always suspicious when it's that low because usually, usually comes back to bite you. So, all right, thank you. They have a track record of successful projects that, that we found fully credible. Great, thanks, appreciate that. All right, and thank you, Mr. Rubin, for the presentation. Attorney Heim, we have a motion for approval. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Sorry about the yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Sam is vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudman. Thank you, members of the board. All right. And that takes us to correspondence received. We have a note from Timur Kai Yantor of 58 Bates Road. Traffic concerns regarding the intersection of Massachusetts Avenue and Bates Road. Uh, Mr. Carroll? I, I move to refer this to TAC and move receipt of the correspondence. Yep, Mrs. Mahan? Second, thank you. Mr. Corsi, any comments? No comments. Mr. Diggins, any comments? We can't hear you. They send it to TAC. Yes, we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, Attorney Heim? Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Kiro? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's unanimous vote. All right, let's take this new business. Attorney Heim? No new business. Atter Mr. Chaplin? No new business. Mr. Diggins? Uh, no, no new business for me. Mr. DeCourcy? No new business. Mrs. Mahan? Um, no, really new business. I just want to check with the chair and attorney Heim that we don't, there will be no motion to adjourn per our November 16th vote that the board of selectmen shall remain in session, um, in concert with the, uh, special town meeting and our adjournment will coincide with the adjournment of town meeting. Yes. Attorney Heim. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. No new business. And Mr. Carroll. Just very quickly, um, I, I was thinking of our former colleague, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, this, this weekend. We just marked the second anniversary of his passing. I, I've raised with the chair um, the possibility of exploring at a proper time and a proper manner, memorializing his contribution. Maybe once we get through uh, COVID, he did, after all, hold the record for uh, service and length of service on on the uh, board and it's a record that will be hard to match and it's one that uh, I will will not um, match. Um, I, I want to just let you all know that you know a, a few weeks ago uh, I know that we we voted to set our town election for um, April 10th um, and I just wanted to uh, make it official that I, I will not be standing for re-election um, to the board at that time. Um, and it has been a great honor, and we'll have uh, uh, plenty of opportunities to uh, to, to discuss things uh, and, and reflect um, in, in the future. But I did want to make that official. I do usually think about these things in election years during Thanksgiving. And uh, uh, thank you all to, to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Caro. You will certainly be missed. All right. So with that, I have new no new business. Um, so. We'll click over. Yeah. <laughs> we will reconvene immediately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Let's hope it goes off. Thanks, right. guys. Good See meeting. you guys in a minute.